hereby call the City Council for November 23, 2019. Please stand and we'll salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. I do want to recognize Mayor Rodriguez for being here tonight and uh, our soon-to-be colleagues on the City Council, Ward 5 Councilor-to-be, Jeff Thompson, and uh, Councilor Large, Rita Mendez. Thank you for being here, Councilors-to-be. This is great. We want this to be uh, every night. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have this many? Uh, Council, wouldn't that be nice? <coughs> I oh, think you is... told them that it was free to get in, but 10 bucks to get out. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were bringing the pizzas tonight. <laughs> we'll go right into the agenda, but this is going to be, when we get to uh, number two, this is a great night for the city of Brockton, so Should we're going to uh, gonna recognize councils and we'll, uh, we'll do it the right way. Mr. Clerk. We have the acceptance of the minutes of the November 12th city council meeting. It's accepted and placed on file. We have the appointment. Councilor Lally, please. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to move that we take items 2 through 13 collectively and Thank act you. under the suspension of the rules. This motion on the floor is properly seconded to take numbers 2 through 13 collectively, and then we're going to act under those uh, suspension of rules tonight. All in favor, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. That motion carries. We'll read number 2 through 13, please. The following 12 individuals have been appointed to the rank of firefighter in the Brockton Fire Department. Alexander Warren. Raymond Golby, Maki Weaver, Aaron Richardson, John Francis, Michael Fredericks, Sean O'Reilly, Eric Bergeron, Richard Joyner, Brian Feeney, Mitchell Papado, and Julio Rodriguez. Councils, before we take a formal vote, I do want to say that the president of Local 144, Bill Hill, uh, texted me. He's actually uh, out of state, but he wanted to pass on his, his thanks to the council uh, for working with uh, the fire department and, and hiring these new uh, new individuals tonight, so uh, I just want to duly note that. The individuals, if they could please be stand, that was just the names you just read off, kindly stand. We're going to take a roll call vote on this, if we could, Madam Clerk, if you could kindly read the roll. Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Sally? Yes. Geary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative. The, uh, the individuals here have been hereby have been confirmed. Mr. President, I move for reconsideration. So second. It does not second. Prevail. Motion on the floor for reconsideration hopes it does not prevail. It was properly second. All in favor of reconsideration, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Congratulations. Before we take a, a, a moment to, uh, to recess, we first of all want to thank you for your service uh, and your call to protect the citizens of the city of Brockton. As we tragically just found out with Lieutenant Menard uh, in Worcester, it's a serious job and you're brave men and women that serve us every day. So we thank you. We wish you safety and uh, great careers for the city of Brockton. Thank you again. Councils, we're back in. We'll go right into uh, agenda item number 14, please. We have the petition of Anna Hoosh for a sign permit located at Music Studios, 630 Montello Street, Brockton. Is that accepted and placed on file? Accepted and placed on file. Is that on there? It doesn't say anything. Nope. Yeah, you know what you can do? Take it here. I'll tell you what. We're going to send that to public safety. What you can do in the town. I don't know if there's a council that will speak with it. Okay. <laughs> Guys, it was just a little noisy on that. But number 14, that was just read. We have two options. We can either vote on that tonight as the full council, 
or we can send it to public safety in our five-member subcommittee. So it's whatever the Mr. will of the council is. Mr. Consigliere, please. Mr. President, I serve as um, chairman of the uh, uh, Committee on Public Safety, and uh, this particular person did contact me uh, a couple of times in regards to the matter, and I, I believe has met all, everything required for her to be able to put her sign up, and she's um, getting quite anxious. And, and in order for that to happen, I'll have to quickly call a meeting within the next you know, week or 10 days and see where everybody's at, or could we be delayed. I would prefer that we just move along because she has met all the requirements and uh, I, I believe information pertaining to Mr. Clerk is there, am I correct? All the information is there in the file. The information is there. Yeah, okay, so we would be able to move forward like you're saying. Okay. I, I, I would rather we move forward. Duly noted, thank you. Thank you. We do that by hand or roll call? We can do that by hand. Causes, we can, we can do it by a hand vote. All in favor of granting? All opposed? It's hereby granted. Thank you, Councilor Yaneri. You're welcome. Go on to number 15, please. Order the Finance Committee for its meeting November 18, 2019. Accepted and placed on file. Order the Audits Committee for its meeting of November 20, 2019. That too is accepted and placed on Order file. Communication from the Chief of the Fire Department requesting authorization to accept and expand a donation in the form of two buses from Brockton Area Transit back to the City of Brockton Fire Department. The donation of the two buses are a total estimate value of $7,600. The donation will be used to help familiarize its firefighters with bus construction, layout, and components and conduct intensive extrication training, practicing skills, using various hydraulic tools, rescue struts, airbags, and saws. The type of training and donation offers invaluable training to the members of the department and allows them to obtain the hands-on experience that is needed to be able to perform during an emergency. Accepted and placed on file. The mayor recommends the, the same. That to accept and placed on file. All is relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file. <clears throat> We have a communication from the Superintendent of Parks requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of an appropriation of $100,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass for improvements to Hancock Playground and Timothy Holster Park. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Superintendent of Parks requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of grant funds related to the Department of Conservation and Recreation 2019 Trails Grant. Funds provided will assist in the detailed GPS mapping of trails and roadways in DW Field Park, as well as the purchase of trailhead kiosks with maps. The $8,000 match for the grant <coughs> excuse me, will be taken from proceeds of the DW Fields Trust. Except on police <coughs> file. Excuse me, uh, re Mayor recommends the same. Accepted and placed on file. The CFO is relative to the same. That too, accepted and placed on file. Uh, from the Mayor, stating the effective November 18, 2019, James Plouffe has been appointed as interim superintendent of buildings for the City of Brockton, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 61A. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the superintendent. Thank you from the superintendents of parks requested that the city council authorize accept acceptance and expenditures of an appropriation of $25,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts through the Department of Conservation and Recreation for improvements at Perkins Park, Buckley Playground, and the Cosgrove Pool. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Communication from the superintendent of parks requested that the city Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of an appropriation of $75,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts through the Department of Conservation and Recreation for playground equipment at Danny Goodwin Park. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file. <clears throat> we are in unfinished business. Anonymous be ordained by the City of Council of Brockton establishing the City of Brockton Stormwater Management Manual for best practices for the illicit discharge and connection stormwater ordinance to establish methods for controlling the introduction of pollutants into the municipal uh, separate storm sewer system in order to comply with the requirements of the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit process. 
This ordinance shall be adopted by incorporation of the City of Brockton Mass Stormwater Management Manual as a new ordinance in the City of Brockton ordinances forthwith. In Council, October 28, 2019, ready to refer the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. Councilors, the question is on the amendment. If you favor the amendment, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed to that amendment, raise your hand. The amendment passes. Now the question is on a passage to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. All in favor of passing to a third reading as amended, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. It passes to a third reading as amended. We have an ordinance amending Article 3 of the City Ordinances be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. That Section 4-40 uh, of Chapter 4 is hereby amended by adding the following section 4-40.1 Problem Properties Task Force. In Council October 28, 2019, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance, <coughs> that report was favorable as amended. Council, the first question that comes before us is the amendment. If you favor the amendment, raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. The amendment passes. Now the question is to a pass to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. Please raise your hand if you favor that. Raise your hand if you oppose that. It hereby passes to a third reading as amended by a hand vote. We have an ordinance amending Article 2 of the City Ordinances be ordained by the City Council, City of Brockton, as follows. That Section 4-21 through Section 4-28 of Chapter 4 is hereby amended as following Section 4-2 one Definitions Relative to Certificate of Fitness. In Council, October 28, 2019, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable same, as amended. Same thing, Councilors. The first question is on the amendment. If you favor that, raise your hand. If you oppose, raise your hand. That passes. The amendment passes. Now the question is to pass to a third reading as amended. If you favor that, kindly raise your hand. If you oppose that, raise your hand. It passes to a third reading as amended. Petition of Jason Courier Lopes and Nelson Roca Lopes, 360 Ferry Street, Fall River, for a transfer of garage license located at 50 Meadowbrook Road, Unit 3, Rockton, Mass. In Clerk's Office, April 23, 2019. Hearing is signed for October 15, 2019. In City Council, October 15, 2019. Council in the cash flow motion to postpone until November 25, 2019. City Council meeting it was properly second. The motion carried by a hand vote. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here on this matter, please come forward to the podium. Councilor. Uh, forgive me, Mr. President. At this time, I would like to, con to postpone this for two more weeks. Uh, Mr. Lopes is here this evening, but I I'd like to take 36, 37, and 38. I'd like to keep them together, um, and I'd like to postpone all three two weeks. Okay, so there's uh, two weeks, which would be what, December 9th? Yes. December 9th. Is there a second on that? Second. It's a second um, to postpone number 36, and we'll do 37, 38 as well, but to postpone until December 9th. All in favor, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, 36 is hereby postponed until December 9th. 37 as well. Councilor, yeah. do, do you want to make a motion to waive the readings? Yes. I make a motion to waive the readings. 37, 38. Thank you. So motion made to uh, waive the readings of 37 and 38. It was properly second. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries. We're going to waive those readings. Thank you. Council is making a motion again, 37, 38. Yes, I'm making a motion on both to postpone them until our meeting <coughs> on December 9th. December 9th. There's a motion. It was properly seconded to postpone number 37 and 38 until December 9th. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed. That carries. Both of those matters, December 9th, are postponed until that date certain. Thank you. Ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Farnham Street extending from the end of the 1965 layout northerly, a distance of about President. 438 feet more or less. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way. This was in council August 26, 2019. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance and Planning. Those reports were favorable. Council Lally. I'd like to move to take uh, items 39 to 43 collectively and to waive the reading. Second. Second. 39 through 43. There's a motion on the floor, Councilors. It was properly seconded to take collectively 39 through 43 and also to waive the reading of those matters. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, that carries. 39 through 43. 
And now the matter is going to come before us. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, could you kindly read the roll? Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative. Councilors, uh, agenda items 39 through 43, those orders have, have been adopted. Thank you. We have the appointment of Lucia Cersei of 212 West Chestnut Street, Brockton, to the Conservation Commission to fill the unexpired term of David Zeff ending March 2020. In Council, October 28, 2019, Reading referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable with an address change. And I know Ms. Cersei is here tonight. Thank you for being here. The matter comes before us now. The question is on confirmation by a roll call vote. Kindly read the roll, Madam Clerk. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's 10 in the affirmative. Appointment is hereby confirmed. Congratulations, Ms. Cersei. Mr. President, I move for reconsideration. Motion uh, was made for reconsideration. I hope it doesn't prevail. It was properly seconded. All in favor of reconsideration, raise your hand. All opposed. Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. M Mr. President? Yes. I would just like to bring everybody's attention to the Conservation Commission. I am proud to say that it is majority women and very intelligent and um, smart ladies that are going to be serving us on the Conservation Commission. I know there is one gentleman there, but it's a majority of ladies. As of right now, all the new appointments have uh, been women. So thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Order that section 26B to 26E, inclusive of chapter 111 of the Mass General Laws, uh, chapter 111, section 26B through 26E, be and hereby is accepted by the City of Brockton in accordance with section 26A of chapter 111 of the Mass General Laws. In Council, August 26, 2019, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That re report was referred back to full Council. In Council, September 23, 2019, Councilor Farwell motion to refer to finance and was properly seconded. The motion carried by a hand vote. That report was favorable. Council Fowell, please. Mr. President uh, and members, I spoke on this briefly in finance, but I wanted to speak again tonight because not everyone uh, watches finance committee meetings. And this is such a positive step forward for the city of Brockton and for the health department. Mm -hmm. We would be creating a Department of Health and Human Resources for a city that's well over 100,000 population. There are so many health issues that we need to address. It's more than just giving flu shots. It's more than just taking blood pressure. There are so many different populations in the city that could benefit from the services that we could offer with this type of an expanded approach to health. Now, in FinCom, I think there was some concern that we would be either doing away with department heads or minimizing them. And that's not really true. What we will still have is we will have a mayor and then we will have a commissioner of health and human resources and then we would have the different department heads that are going to be incorporated under this health and human resources department so Ms. Fitzgerald will still be there for the council on aging and Mr. Farrell will still be there for veteran services there will need to be an, a person to replace Mr. Tataglia but that person will run the health department and for so many reasons I think we need to go forward with this, and we need to approach health and human resource, uh, human services, if I've been saying resources, forgive me, human services in a much more appropriate and a much more holistic way. So I hope this receives a positive vote tonight, and I think that the people of the city of Brockton will be well served when we have this all implemented, especially with an 11-member advisory commission, our council. Just think, we'll have 11 people who can feed information and recommendations and thoughts into the health department, into the human uh, services department. And I think having that kind of inclusion can only be beneficial. So I thank you and I hope my colleagues will support this. Thank you, Council Fowler. Council McGeary, please. Thank you, Mr. President. 
the other evening when I, when I brought up my concerns, uh, I still have many of the same concerns, but in concept, I, I think that anything we can do to improve the health of the citizens of Brockton is a positive thing. My concerns are in the quality, qualifications of those individuals that may uh, be in the, put into those positions. And, and quite honestly, right now, I'm more concerned about how that department is, is operating and who's overseeing it. While I'm, I'm pretty confident that this is going to pass this evening, it is still a several month process until these, all these positions are to be filled and, and the Board of Health continues to function shorthanded and without leadership and that is going to continue on for the next several months because you have to not only seat your commission position but you also have to seat that board before the Board of Health will stop functioning as a Board of Health. So I would ask at this time, uh, the vote's going to go through and however it's going to go through obviously, but I would ask that either our current mayor or our mayor-elect give permission for that position to be filled. You, the mayor or mayor-elect is going to get to have their say on the commissioner, if, if that's a concern. But I would like to see the, the position of, of director, current director, or executive director today and, and director tomorrow, however it can work out. Let them, who are, are physicians, qualified medical people, file, find someone qualified to, to run that department now, if anything should happen between now and that time that this commission is set up, any kind of health crisis in the city or anything that could negatively impact the health, the quality of health in this city, we have no way to respond to it at this time without going outside. So I would ask that, that our administration um, look at this closely and um, take, take these thoughts into consideration. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Thank Council. You, just Mr. point of Mayor. information, I just confirmed with Mayor Rodriguez, if, if, if this does pass, uh, there's all intentions to have an interim commissioner put in place. I, I certainly, I think that's a great idea to have an interim person in, in position, but again, it comes down to their ability and their knowledge of, it, it, of, of medical issues. It's, it's, uh, I know that at one time we were thinking of putting someone from the building department to oversee. That's fine for the day-to-day -day, uh, budget operations, but it has but you have to have someone qualified in there for the medical end. Um, we have one nurse in that department right now for, for 100,000 people. So um, I just want to make sure that the residents of Brockton are taken care of. I'm only here for a short time, and I've spent over 40 years in the medical field. This is near and dear to my heart. And as I said before, I'm glad that there's an RN coming on the board to, to help oversee the, the future of the health of the city. But I just want to make sure that whoever is appointed has the qualifications to do the job necessary. Thank you, Councilor. Mayor, Mayor Rodriguez, please. No, you can see wherever you want to go, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to be clear about this, um, and I mentioned this the other day when we were met here in FinCom. The current Board of Health appointed, without my knowledge or approval, someone who was a clerk to assume Mr. Tataglia's position. So I understand all the concerns about qualifications, uh, how, we're, you know, how we're gonna get somebody to kind of oversee this department. But I'm sure between myself and, and the incoming mayor, we're more than capable of finding an appropriate person to on an interim basis so that we have time to sit down and find the most qualified individual, I can guarantee you within the city that there are plenty of individuals who have the qualifications and knowledge of health and human services. I know we sat here the whole time discussing flu shots and the ability to interpret health issues. We have three hospitals in this community, more than enough than other communities have to deal with the health issues that we have in this community. I think what's at most concerning is the fact that we're not doing a very good job in dealing with the human services aspect of the health of that, this new health department. So I am sure that I, I'll have a conversation with our mayor-elect and come up with the best possible solution and interim basis to deal with this, uh, with this new department. But I think it will be uh, an improvement based on what I was faced with when that appointment actually took place because 
uh, to a point when you hear that we're seeking the most qualified, seeking the most qualified, but nobody actually called me and asked me what my opinion was on the most qualified person under the leadership of a mayor of this city to do that. So, but I'm actually going to guarantee this council that we're going to do our due diligence to make sure that we find the most appropriate person to appoint on an interim basis and then seek out the best qualified person to be the, the full-time person in charge of that department. Council McGeary. Thank, thank you again, Mr. President, and all due respect to, to our mayor. I, I completely understand and I, I believe that you will do that, but currently we have a Board of Health. The appointment of that position is the Board of Health's position as long as they are in, in existence. And until that permanent commissioner or temporary commissioner is appointed by the mayor and the, boards, the advisory, advisory board is set up, mm -hmm. the Board of Health is still the functioning health department in the city. So that, that, I don't want that point missed. And I do, I, I'm sure, Mr. Mayor, and I'm sure, uh, Mayor-elect, that you will, your hearts are with this city as much as mine is. And I'm very, I feel very comfortable that your generation of leaders is here um, replacing my generation. But, it, but ha again, having been in the medical profession for as long as I have, uh, it's a concern I have, and I, it's, it's because we're in, in the interim period right now, and they've been floundering for a while over there, and I'm just hoping for good leadership. I am not tied to anyone or anything. I'm just looking at this as somebody who saw the H1N1 and the effect it had on the city a number of years ago and how difficult it was and what we had to go through. And it wouldn't take too much to throw us back into a, a crisis period in the city in light of, in light of today. So um, thank you for your time and thank you for your input. Thank you very much, Council. And I do want to recognize our soon-to-be colleague, Council Lodge, Tina Cardoza, RN. Uh, as well for being here. Thank you. She was out in the... Babysitting. <coughs> <laughs> I get it. Anybody else want to speak on this matter? Council Monaghan, you this want to speak on this question. matter? I think what I think our understanding was is will there not be a department head in the health department separate from the commission? <coughs> is that correct? Yes. Okay. And also, that's a union position? It is right now. So we'll have to replace that per the union? So why isn't a posting gone up to replace that person with, that, with the interim in there now? Why haven't we posted a job to replace the Board of Health um, Department? Here? I think, is that basically your concern that we don't have anybody running that department? Through you to the council from Ward 2. Uh, it's, it's, my concern is that there is nobody there. And with my understanding of how this process is going to play out, there is still going to be a department head there who who I, my comments are that that person could be appointed and then the, the mayor or the mayor-elect could then take the time picking the right person to be the commissioner for that, that uh, department, overseeing the multiple departments, um, which is what the commission is going to be doing. It's going to have several departments and, a, and almost a dozen um, commissions and boards to oversee. So it, it should take some time and thought on who is going to be the commissioner while the whole time we still have a Board of Health operating. Um, and like I said, the time frame that you're talking to get all these other positions filled in is time currently that there is no direct leader in that department. Why not allow this person to be, this position to be filled mm -hmm. and while you're doing your search be a commissioner? Thank you, Council. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Mr. McGarry, I guess my, my answer to you is that right at this moment, until we vote on this, I, as the mayor of this city, have no say who that department head is right. because that decision was made by the Board of Health. So once we eliminate that whole process, then the administration can appoint someone into that position as well, as well as an interim commissioner to run the, the overall department. But right now, that decision isn't mine, nor was it mine to begin with, with the passing of, uh, with, with Lou Tartaglia. So we don't, the fact that I haven't appointed anybody to run the health department is because it's not my function. And it was made very clear to me that it wasn't my function. Therefore, there wasn't anything I could do. But once we act, we, we, we act on this particular act, then that the assumption of the running of that department falls back onto the administration to take the necessary steps that we need to take. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I un certainly understand that. And I understand that once this is passed, and if and if you 
you'll move for reconsideration tonight, I would think, and hope, with hopes that it doesn't prevail. Um, and that way it can be started, the search can be started immediately. But I do recall when we had uh, Dr. Brophy here the other night, she said she was told, the Board of Health was told not to fill that position, even though technically, as you're saying, Mr. Mayor, you don't have, you can't fill that position, but for some reason they feel that they are not allowed to be, they haven't been able to fill that position um, pending the outcome of, of this legislation. So I, I think there's maybe a breakdown in communications because to me, ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is, is the health of the city of Brockton. Yes. And we have one of the two key departments in this city for the quality of life and the health of our citizens that has been running rudderless since the passing of the last uh, executive director. Um, so I'm just asking that this be attacked uh, vigorously by the current and the future administration so that the citizens of Brockton are well protected. And that, and that's, you know, the bottom line. And, and thank you for your time and allowing me to speak. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Monaghan followed yeah, by Councilor Falwell, please. I have a question please. though. Why, even if this passes, <clears throat> It's still a union position. It still has to be posted. I don't think anybody has the right to appoint somebody there, a commissioner or not, because it's a union position. That has to be posted. That has to be filled. It doesn't make any difference if we pass the commission or not. In my mind, I, is that your understanding? I mean, this is what my understanding is that it's a posted <coughs> job, it's a union job, fill the job. A commission can come, and you're going to get a commissioner who will be in charge of all the departments, and he'll be in charge of the um, department head of the health department. We have some confusion going on here, I think. Yes, Councillor uh, Monaghan, there is some confusion. I think we're conf confusing two things. The Board of Health right now has an interim person who was appointed by the Board of Health. Right. And that will stay as is, because that was done without the administration. The only thing that the administration or the mayor can actually do once you approve this order is for us to move forward in terms of hiring somebody on an interim basis to run the global health and human services department. The board, I, and I, know, I noticed what Council McG uh, McGarry was saying in terms of the department uh, running somewhat on uh, an uneven uh, keel, but if you recall, soon after the passing of Mr. Tataglia, the Board of Health appointed somebody to take over the health department. So I don't understand how can you say that there, was no, there wasn't somebody there when the Board of Health actually had an interim person running it. The only difference is that that person was not selected by the mayor to run that position. So the Board of Health has its function. All the, uh, the, uh, the, the inspectors and everybody else that works in the department has been functioning. The director was appointed by the Board of Health, and the only thing that we're seeking is an opportunity to appoint a commissioner of this global department that we're looking for as we move forward in the, in the creation of this new department. Mr. President. Councilor. Again, I, I do think this, there's basically been a breakdown in communication somewhere because we're, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. Yes, from my understanding, from my conversation, prior to last Monday night's meeting with the, uh, a member of the Board of Health, I was informed that they had been requested not to, to fill the position. Yes, they did appoint a temporary person in there, and the intent was for that person to be very temporary, while the, and they were going to do an immediate search to replace that person. But for some reason, and I am not privy to any conversations other than what I was, I only heard one side, and that, I w that that person was, told, was asked, not told, but asked not because this legislation was going to be a, a, um, coming in. Um, but the fact is that even with this le legislation passed in this evening, you're still looking at potentially several months before all the positions, and again, Mass General Law requires those, that the person be hired, the board to be in place, to my knowledge, this is how my interpretation of the Mass General Law is in, in regards to this, the board needs to be in place, and then the Board of Health will, will stop functioning. So until that occurs, it would be nice. And again, uh, as uh, you know, we do have that position. It, is, it, it may take time because it will have to meet the requirements of the union, any union requirements at that level. 
I was not in, in when I was a previously in a, a department head in a union here, I was not in with a department head's union, so I don't know what their requirements are. I was in with 1162. Um, so the, the bottom line is you're, the mayor is still going to, whoever is still going to be appointing the commissioner. And there is going to be a department head underneath. At this point, I don't, if, if it's all right then, if, if it's still on the Board of Health, somebody should communicate with the Board of Health, fill, fill that department head position, and they will eventually just be a department head answering to a commissioner. Um, and, it's, and I'm sorry I'm belaboring the point, but I, I do want the clarification out there. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Council Powell, you have a follow-up? <coughs> Just a couple of things. In, in any city or town which accepted this, these statutes, the same thing is going to happen. You, you, you wouldn't hire a commissioner of health and human, ser uh, human services in advance of passing this. You would have to wait until the governing body, whether it's the selectmen or a city council, adopted this statute and then set that process in motion. Um, you know, the Board of Health, the current Board of Health, if they had thought it important enough, could have quickly advertised and tried to find someone qualified who could run the operation on a temporary basis. For whatever reason, they didn't do that. They didn't want any input from the mayor. And so we thrust a, a young lady into a position where it really wasn't fair. She's a union member supervising other union members, mm -hmm. presumably approving overtime, presumably, presumably assigning them to duties and responsibilities, and that's just nuts. I mean, that she just should never have been put in that position. So will it take time to implement this? Yes. But do I think the mayor and the mayor-elect can at least on a temporary basis find someone to replace Mr. Tataglia and bring some semblance of order and organization to the Board of Health, I really think they can. I mean, sometimes we sit here, and I'm guilty of it too, we look at all the reasons why we don't think something's going to work, but maybe we ought to look at all the reasons why it is going to be an improvement. And to me, looking for a, a, uh, an opportunity to fill Mr. Tataglia's position with someone who's truly qualified uh, and having the mayor and the mayor-elect involved in that, in consultation with others, I think is a positive step forward. So I know we're spending a lot of time in this, and I agree with my colleague. We both, or all of us, want the same thing. But the last thing I would say in terms of collective bargaining, sure. I've never been in favor of department heads being in a union. And this might be an opportunity for the mayor and the mayor-elect to sit down with the union and bargain and take this out of the union and make this truly a department head. Maybe we don't want to have so many department heads in a union. I mean, some have to live here, some don't. Some have automatic pay raises, others have to wait for us to make an ordinance change. It just seems like a very uneven and uncomfortable, and I might add, maybe inequitable system. So we've got to take some baby steps forward, but I think in the long run we'll be where we want to be. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor McGeary. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. President. The Mass General Laws state that until that new board, that position is filled and that new board is set, that the Board of Health is the functioning health agency in the city of Brockton or in any community that has accepted that. And I agree uh, with my colleague, other large colleague, that. Many communities have done that, and they have gone, many, most of them probably have gone the home rule petition route because there are, some ch there are changes in how it's set up. And I don't know what you folks face in the future either when you try and reorganize and create the organization that you want to create. You still, I think you're still going to have to go home rule, but I won't be here to be involved with that. But the bottom line is, is that they need leadership now. And it's not, the more that it's being spoken about tonight, it seems more that there's a breakdown in communication between the Board of Health and the Mayor's Office, one way or another, and I'm, I'm not throwing stones. There's nobody here from Board of Health to defend themselves. So all I'm saying is let's move forward, get somebody in there to run that department that's qualified, and then let's get a, and then follow through and get your new department head to run your, the uh, health agency. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGarry. I move the, I move the question. Uh, just, President wants to say something. In terms of the process, 
Wait one second, Councilor. Um, whoever the mayor uh, puts forward for a commissioner, if this passes, has to be, that individual, he or she has to be confirmed by this body. So that needs to be stated and put on the record as well tonight. Um, and in terms of if this does pass tonight, the individual that is sitting in the position of the late Mr. Tataglia stays in that position until we get to that point. I just want to make sure, there's been a lot of information shared tonight. I just want to make sure people are clear on that. But, you know, we have assurances from the mayor, soon to be back on the council, um, and it is a step forward. So you made a motion to move. Mm -hmm. No second, right? No second. Councilor at large, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in regard to this, Marty, I think that, you know, with a city of our size, uh, I strongly believe we have a nice opportunity to do something different. And it's kind of like pretty disturbing given the fact that the acting mayor claimed that when that position was vacant and he found out that he has no say into it. And I, we, I feel like as the mayor of, of a city of our size, the mayor should be able to talk about what's going on within the health department, given the fact that will be his responsibility for the safety and also the well-being of everyone. I can understand people do have concern, but I strongly believe this is one of the best opportunity that I can possibly think for our city. But I can also empathize with my colleague uh, down there in regard to the concern that you have. I mean, Dr. Boff has stated that in regard to the Mass Massachusetts general law, in regard to the qualification of that person. I believe we have people who are qualified, if not overqualified, to fill those positions in the city. If we are talking about improvement, if we are talking about change, if we are talking about new leadership, I think we have an opportunity to prove it. For so long, we feel like sometimes if this is not going this way, we shouldn't do it. But I think it's not a matter of whether or not we want it, it's doing what we think for the people. And I think in regard to Dr. Boffi's statement, based on what she said, she claimed that she was told not to fill that position. And again, the mayor has no say into it. And I think the Board of Health has been doing a great job, but I think having someone in that position where that person will be able not only to communicate with the mayor, but also give the mayor the information that he needs to represent the people accordingly is something that we can truly benefit from. I think that you know it's a long process, and I also believe uh, we as you know the elected official in regard to the part of the legislature, we have a solemn obligation like the president stated to determine whether or not whomever the mayor is appointed is qualified to fill that position. And I think you or um, anybody who would be part of this council will have the opportunity to question that person, to determine whether or not you will be the right person to serve the people. Yes, we have three hospitals in the city, but I feel like we have to stop running the city of Brockton as a little town and stand up and run the city as a city. Let's face it, we have more than 100,000 people in this place. I mean, how long is it going to take for us to actually do something positive in regard to the people that we are facing now? I think we have to stop, worry about what will be the consequences, and doing what we, what we know will be best for the people. I do have respect for anybody who's been in the medical field. Dr. Booth has stated that. That person must be knowledgeable and also able to do the job. And I think uh, the council will not hire somebody solely because you know, they live in the city. And the mayor stated that. I'm assuming that we have people, as we speak, who are overqualified to fill that position. I would encourage all members in this council to vote in favor of this because I think now is the moment not only to talk about issues but to do what we think is best. Once this passes, I think it will be under the mayor's responsibility to go out there and find the person that can fill that position. Until then, he cannot do anything about it. And I think it's very unfortunate to find out that you had no say. I mean, let's face it, I mean, what is the mayor's job, especially from a department like that? Imagine that, you know, you just jump into this, this person died, and now you find out that you have no say. I never thought the mayor had no say into this. And according to Mayor Wojigas, who claimed that the board told you that, they have to make that decision. And I think having someone under the mayor administration in regard to appointing that person, he or she will be able to tell you what's going on. I can understand we have union problem to determine whether or not that person will be unionized. Let's not worry about what's going to happen next. Let's vote on this tonight and making sure that when we go out there, we tell the people, when we come together tonight, we did what we think is best for everybody. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councilor. Anybody else want to speak on this? There's a motion, there was a motion made by Councilor McGarry. Uh, to second. Call it. That's seconded. So we're gonna, take, uh, we're gonna take the vote. And again, it's much like what we always do under the process. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Beauregard? Yes. 
Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGarry? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative. The order is hereby adopted, Council. I move reconsideration. The second. hope it does not prevail. Motion on the floor, properly second reconsideration. Hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration, kindly raise your hand. All opposed. Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Thank you, Councilors. Number 46, please. <clears throat> Order an appropriation of two million two hundred fifty-eight thousand eight hundred forty-five dollars from unappropriated estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund, increase in Chapter 70A to net school spending, and further appropriate one million one hundred seventy-eight thousand four hundred ninety-six dollars from net school spending to non-net school spending. In Council, November 12, 2019, Reading referred to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable as amended to split the order into two parts. Councilors, the first thing before us is the question on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, the amendment hereby carries. Now the question is on adoption as amended by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGarry? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Orders are hereby adopted as amended, Councillors. Yes, Councillor. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell and I spoke today. There's some paperwork that needs to be signed tomorrow by the mayor, so I'm going to move reconsideration in the hope it does not prevail. Second. This item. Motion for reconsideration. Hopes it doesn't prevail. As the motion on the floor is properly second. All in favor of reconsideration, kindly raise your hand. All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Thank you, Councillors. We'll note number 47, please. Resolution to file and accept grants with and from the Commonwealth of Mass Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs for the Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations to John L. O'Donnell, John L. O'Donnell Playground. In Council, October 28, 2019, Brandon referred to Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, can I read the roll? ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Head of the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted. An order of transfer of $4,500,000 from the Health Insurance Employee Benefits to non-net school spending. In Council, November 12, 2019, Reading Fair to Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted. Order to President, uh, same situation as uh, <coughs> prior one. I move reconsideration. Second. Hope second. Prevail. Motion for reconsideration. I hope it doesn't prevail. It was properly second. All in favor of reconsideration, kindly raise your hand. All opposed? Motion for reconsideration does not prevail. Thank you, Council. I had an appropriation of $790,000 for an unappropriated estimate receipts for fiscal 20 of the general fund to various departments. And Council November 12, 2019, Reading for the Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. Council Farwell, please. Mr. President, I have an amendment I'd ask the clerk to read. I move admission of it. So a second on that, please? Second. So motion made, it was properly seconded uh, to file it. All in favor of that? All opposed? File. Kindly read it. In Council, November 25th, 2019, I move to amend the appropriation of $790,000 in agenda item number 49 by reducing the amount appropriated by $60,000. This $60,000 is the amount listed on the November 12, 2019 agenda for costs associated with moving the Human Resources Department to the War Memorial Boat Building and moving the Finance Department to an unspecified location. The remaining net amount of the appropriation will be $730,000. Councilor uh, Winthrop Fowell, Councilor at Large. Councilor Fowell, please. Mr. President and members of the Council, uh, in our packet for the original meeting of November 12th, there was a breakdown as to how this $790,000 would be spent. $30,000 was to relocate the Human Resources Department to the War Memorial Building and $30,000 was to relocate the finance office somewhere. There are certain core departments that every mayor 
has to have close by. Finance, law, and human resources. Those three are so wound or weaved into the fabric of what we do every day in terms of collective bargaining, uh, investigation, employee investigations, analyzing financial trends, deciding legal cases, that to fragment these departments and to put human resources over in the War Memorial Building uh, is just not a good idea. Uh, we have elderly people who come to City Hall, they go to human resources, they have some insurance questions, and then they go downstairs and pay a bill. What are we going to have them go over to the War Memorial Building uh, and then have to come over here to do their business? No. I think having been in the mayor's office and knowing the responsibilities and how many times you have to call on people either in the law department, the finance department, or human resources, it, it's just critical to have them clustered close by. So I would hope that this amendment would be adopted, and if after the first of the year there is some desire to relocate or reconfigure this building, that's fine. But I don't think it's appropriate at this time, and uh, I hope the amendment will be adopted. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President. Councilor. If, if I might, Mr. President, I, I, I'd want to take a moment as well and, and make a few comments in regards to this because my sentiments are pretty much the same as what um, my colleague at large, uh, uh, Fowler, was mentioning um, in regards to moving the uh, human resources to the War Memorial Building. Uh, first, I just I want to rule out a little bit of history. And I was here back when Jack Units, Mayor Units, wanted to move some uh, administrative offices into the uh, uh, War Memorial Building. And when we wanted to do that, or he wanted to do that, um, I will enlighten all of you that at some point, the uh, veterans of foreign war will definitely come out and remind you that that building was built for a purpose, not an administration building. And I don't even know to, to how this day that uh, the late Mayor Carpenter even was able to put, uh, um, you know, the uh, um, Steve Hook and uh, emergency management um, in there because it is really an administrative function to a point, but not really. But um, I, I think before you even think about doing that, our legal department needs to take a look at, uh, if we were to do it, you need to take a look at what the deed actually says because it is not set up for administration it's set up for the veterans of this great city and the people that work, worked, um, I should say, served um, to be our veterans. So be careful of trying to utilize that building for some other than what it is truly was built to be for. So I just want to uh, bring that to the attention of uh, my colleagues, just a, a little brief history lesson. I know it, I shouldn't give it, but sometimes I have to, so I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councils. Councils, let me just be clear, um, if this does pass, and I become the mayor on January 6, I would bring that back to City Hall because I, I believe that this, kind of what you said, Mr. Fowler, certain departments need to be here, and that's paramount to the employees and to the citizens. So I want to be clear on that. If there is a move, it's going to be a quick move because it would be coming back here. Um, but with that being said, could we take a two-minute recess if we could? We're back in, Council. Mr. President, just a, follow, please. just a clarification yes, if, after conferring with the mayor. I did not mean to suggest that the finance department was moving to parts unknown, Cabo Verde, Honolulu, to a destination unknown. There is going to be, I guess, a reconfiguration within City Hall, and I just spoke to the mayor and I said, if they do that, then just come back to us with a modest and realistic request for funds, and I'm sure we can do that. So. Uh, my apologies if I misled anyone or, or made a suggestion that somehow we were banishing uh, finance to parts unknown. Councils, thank you. And I think we all recognize this space is a premium in this building. I mean, this is an old building. Staff's grown over time. Departments have, have been built out over time. But there are certain departments, in my humble opinion, that need to be under the dome here at City Hall. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Council, you have an amendment, right? Yes. It's a $60,000 reduction. Is there a second on that amendment? Second. It's a second by Council Yaneri on that. So we're going to take a vote relative to the amendment. All in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. All opposed? Okay, so the amendment passes. So now the question is on adoption as amended by a roll call vote. Uh, Kindly read the roll, Madam Clerk. So now it becomes 17. Beauregard? Yes. <laughs> Darrancourt? Yes. Yaneri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. 
Aguirre? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. So the order as amended is hereby adopted. Thank you, councilors. We have a resolve to invite a representative from the Justice Center of Southeastern Massachusetts to present to the City Council proposals currently being reviewed in this state legislative session in the Joint Judiciary Committee, the Homes Act and CEC Bill. In Council, October 28, 2019, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. <coughs> this is on adoption by a roll call. Mr. Back. President, I'm Counselor, sorry. Councilor, Councilor. Yes, I, I spoke uh, with the cleric, and we just we need to change the CEC to RTC bill. RTC bill. Yes. Okay, CEC is a Scrivener's error, so it should be reflected that it's hereby revised to state RTC bill. R Thank you. So noted. So duly noted no, by the was, clerk. So now case. the question is on uh, on adoption by a roll call vote. If you could kindly read the roll, please. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The, uh, the order is hereby adopted. Thank you, councilors. Ordered that the city council rescind the following appropriation of $150,000 that was in city council and approved on July 22nd, 2019 from available funds free cash to school department, $150,000. And city council, November 12, 2019, ready to refer the standing committee on finance. That report was favorable. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Kindly read the roll. Madam Clerk. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Yes. Ian Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monahan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted. I to invite Mr. Robert Jenkins in his capacity as Executive Director of the Rockton Redevelopment Authority, the BRA, to present to the City Council updated information on the BRA's construction of the municipal parking garage, including the construction schedule, budget, and currently expected completion date, and any other related information. In Council, October 28, 2019, ready to refer to Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. Councilors, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Beauregard? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Resolve is hereby adopted. We have orders. Order acceptance and expenditures of a donation in the form of two buses from Brockton Area Transit to City of Brockton Fire Department. Total estimated value of $7,600. For the Finance Committee, please. We have acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $100,000 from the Department of Conservation and Recreation grant to City of Brockton. Park and Recreation. Bird to Finance, please. An order acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $10,000 from the Department of Conservation and Recreation 2019 Trails Grant to City of Brockton Park and Recreation 2019 Trails Grant Fund. That to refer to finance. Ordered that the Brockton City Council, acting on behalf of the City of Brockton, for consideration of $1 hereby grants to Mass Electric Company the perpetual right and easement to install, construct, reconstruct, repair, replace, add to, maintain, and operate for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current and for the transmission of intelligence and underground electric distribution system located upon a parcel of land situated on the westerly side of Warren Avenue, Brockton, Mass., and further that the City Council authorizes the Mayor to execute the grant of easement and to take other action as necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of the same. For the finance, please. Order acceptance and expenditure. Mr. President? Yes, I'm sorry. Could we take 57 and 58 under the suspension of rules? Um, the um, superintendent of Parks and Recreation is here tonight, Tim Carpenter, and he could answer any questions on these. Do you want to take them collectively and under suspension? Yes. Okay. Second. There's Second. a motion on the floor. It was properly seconded to take 57 and 58 collectively and then to act on the suspension of the rules. All in favor, kindly raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries, and we do have the superintendent if any questions come up. Mr. Superintendent, good evening. Good evening. Have any statement for the council? 
Um, so these are both uh, state appropriations. There's no match to the city. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Any questions, councilors? Seeing none. Uh, oh, Councilor, I'm sorry, Councilor Castro. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. What is the purpose of the funds? Uh, so the one for Danny Goodwin pl Playground, which is located at East Junior High, is very specific. Uh, that can be used for play equipment only. Uh, so that'll be the intention there is to replace some of the aging uh, play equipment at that particular location. Uh, the, the next appropriation um, is sort of a combination of three locations. It can be utilized at Perkins Park, the Cosgrove Pool, or Buckley Playground. Um, it's, to be quite honest with you, Councillor, it's not a lot of money. Um, so stretching those dollars amongst those three parcels is going to be a challenge. Um, the Cosgrove Pool, as you know, is into its, I believe, 52nd year of use. Um, <laughs> so uh, it does need a lot of work. Um, there are some things over at Perkins Park that we would like to try and improve. Um, and Buckley's Playground does need a little touching up. So those $25,000 are going to need to be stretched very, very thin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you other Mr. questions? President. The matter comes before us. The uh, question is on adoption by a roll call vote for 57 and 58. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Oops, let me better read. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Accept the expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $75,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass to the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Audit further in expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $25,000 from the Department of Conservation and Recreation grant to City of Brockton Park and Recreation. Now the matter comes before us, councils. Roll call vote, please. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Enieri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The orders are hereby adopted, councillors. Mr. Thank President. Councillor. If I might, since we're taking those two um, and, and acting on them this evening, can we go back to item number 54, which is the $100,000 conservation recreation grant for two city parks? One is to work on the Hancock part for $50,000, and the other is the, the Hoster Park, which I've been waiting for for at least two years to be done. And I do have to say that it was something that I discussed with the former late mayor when I was council president. Um, he, um, how do I put it in a nice phrase, to, but um, he did live up to uh, his expectation in make sh making sure that um, there was going to be money there for the Hancock and for um, the Hoster Park to be um, repaired, which is Hoster Park is on West Chestnut Street, which I, I do want to have done. And while Mr. Carpenter is here, he can explain what's going to happen there. But um, I, I do want to keep in mind that Mr. Hoster is a Vietnam vet, uh, a nephew to the, the late former Mayor <coughs> Paul Stadinsky, so I, I would like to uh, get going on that sooner than uh, than any later. So if, if we can do that. Thank you, Councilor. If we can do that. I'd like to move that we suspend the rules and act on that for second. Evening. Motion on the floor, uh, properly seconded for 54, which we had originally referred to finance. It's a motion to take it and act on the suspension of the rules. All in favor of that? All opposed? That motion carries. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, good evening. Good evening, Councillors. Uh, so again, this is a state appropriation, $100,000. There is no match to the city. Uh, this one's a little less specific than, for example, the Danny Goodwin appropriation. Uh, this is our second appropriation um, that can be utilized towards Hancock. This one includes uh, Halster Playground. Uh, as the ward councillor mentioned, uh, Halster Playground does need considerably more than um, Hancock Playground right now. Uh, we've already redone the basketball courts at Hancock. We've already redone the swing sets, uh, put in some new play equipment over there. Uh, so I look forward, I don't have specific plans yet as I wanted to uh, hear from those people within the ward and I look forward to working with the ward counselor at any future ward meetings to uh, get some input from the community as exactly how they'd like to see those funds spread, uh, spent yeah. specifically towards Hollister Playground. Mm -hmm. Now the matter is no questions for the superintendent or are there any? None? Okay. Thank you very much for that explanation. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ianieri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. McGeary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Orders hereby adopted. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you.
I'm resolved to invite the chair of the Brockton Retirement Board, William Farmer, to inform the city council on any updates and any changes retirees should expect and any new policies implemented. Let's refer to finance committee. Now we come on, uh, do we have any late files? We do have a late file, Mr. Monahan. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for a late file. Second. The motion on the floor is properly second for a late file. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Okay. <clears throat> Order that the city council dedicate the following percentage, which may not be less than 25% of the local option excise on retail marijuana sale revenues collected under Mass General Laws, Chapter 64N, SS3, to the Community Impact Stabilization Fund established under Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, effective for fiscal 2020, beginning July 1, 2019, or take any other action relative thereto submitted by Councilor Monaghan. That's uh, gonna be referred to the Finance Committee. Mr. President, just a point of information. Did we do both 50, did we do 55 as well on the agenda or is that sent to FinCon? That was sent to FinCon. We, uh, we had referred that to the Finance Committee. Yeah. That was FinCon. You know, he, it, since the superintendent's here, I'd like to move suspension of the rules and we act on that tonight. Second. That's Motion on the floor, properly seconded. Second. Uh, to take number 55 under suspensions and act tonight. All in favor? I'll oppose that motion carries. We originally referred it to finance, but we can bring it before the council now. Any questions for the superintendent? Merry Christmas, you don't have to come back. Um, seeing none, oh, wait a minute. questions on adoption by a roll call oh, vote. Oh, this there are questions. What's the four? So this is the uh, 2019 trails grant program uh, offered through the state. Uh, this will go towards, uh, what I'd like to have done is the Trails that we would like people to utilize to be GPSed, uh, as well as the roads, given um, all the proper <coughs> distances. At that point, we can produce a large map. Uh, we are gonna purchase four kiosks, trailhead markers, uh, to display those maps, uh, to allow people the information um, to the trails that are in the park, as well as the roads and the distances. Um, and those kiosks will also be able to provide space for upcoming events in the park, as well as the possibility of smaller maps that people could bring with them. So this is all for DW Field Park? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm sorry, DW Field Park. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Board Godfrey. Thank you, Mr. President. Isn't there a match? Uh, so there is an $8,000 that will be coming out of the DW Field Trust. Okay, so um, I just wanted to So again, it's, it's really no cost to the city. Okay. Um, and that helps defer some of the cost of the kiosks. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you, Councils. Any other questions? Seeing none, we're going to do a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ianeri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Gary? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. The affirmative. Orders hereby adopted. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you very much, Mr. Superintendent. Happy Thanksgiving. Councillors, do we have any Councillors' recognition? Councillor Nicastro, please. Thank you. Good evening. Um, everyone in the city of Brockton is invited on November 29th from 6 until 7.30 p.m., and so that's this Friday evening, to an evening with James Edgar. Um, join us here at City at City Hall? No, it's at the War Memorial Building. Join us at the War Memorial Building for singing, music, a special reading of the James Edgar story, and a visit from a very important surprise guest. The War Memorial Building is located at 156 <laughs> West Elm Street, and this event is free. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other counselors? Oh. Councilor McGarry, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. I would be, I would be remiss if, if everyone wasn't invited Saturday to the uh, <laughs> this Saturday to the Christmas holiday parade in downtown Brockton. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Starting off here at City Hall, there is three hours of free pictures with uh, a jolly old fellow, and then uh, the parade kicks off at 1 p.m. and uh, we have the Brockton High Band, we have some town bands, we have floats, we have schools involved. I certainly hope that I see everyone out along the parade route. <laughs> we'll be looking for you, Councillor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Councillor, just yeah, Councillor, just to remind you again, uh, a week from tonight, December second, six thirty, we're having our tax 
classification hearing. Again, if you could duly note that in your records. Um, I do want to tell you, councilors, that I did go into the State House today. I did have a meeting as the mayor elect with Lieutenant Governor. I met with Karen Polito for about a half an hour to talk about the goals and how we want to move Brockton forward, keep it on track moving forward. Very positive meeting. She will be here on a regular basis. She does, um, she's going to try, try to make every effort to be here on January 6th as well. Um, we do want to wish both Cardinal Spellman and Brockton High football good luck on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And I want to wish you and your families a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Same, Same to you. Same to you. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>